What's going on guys? Welcome back to Surviving Alabama and today I got to do some maintenance on my tractor and I'm going to do something that probably is going to look crazy. See this umbrella right here? So I don't have a um a canopy on top of my tractor because I, I got a little bitty tractor. I'm going to turn around and show it to you. All right, so this is my little bitty tractor. It's a 21 horsepower Bobcat CT21. Four wheel drive with a loader, hydrostat. All right, so uh, today I got to do some maintenance on it and it's time to, uh, uh, to do an oil change. And see this roll bar system right here? So I got to go do some bush hogging uh for a surf project at my church and lady needed a she didn't have a whole lot but and so, as you can see i can't do a whole lot because it's little it's just a four foot bush hog but she's got about an acre or so that's grown up and they need somebody to go in there and bush hog for her. so she's a 80 something year old lady and she ain't gonna be able to do it so anyway so i'm gonna go do that but it's gonna be it's going to be uh, hot, you know. It's Alabama in the middle of the summer. So I had this crazy idea. I was like, okay, they make these tractor umbrella slash canopy things. And I need something that's going to be kind of portable because... See my greenhouse there? I'm just getting ready to reskin this thing. I'm getting close. Hopefully I can do that in the month of August because i got to get stuff planted. But see, the my uh, I, it's eight foot to the floor to ceiling right there. And so I drive this tractor up in there and I need to be able to roll, pull this roll bar down cause it, it folds down. And if I had a canopy on it, I couldn't, I couldn't drive up in there. And that's really why the only reason I haven't put a canopy on it. So I had this crazy idea. I'm gonna take an umbrella and fasten it maybe like right here i need the, the the umbrella part to just go over the top right here so i don't know if it's going to work or not it's probably going to look stupid but as long as the sun ain't beating down on me i don't really care and i, I just need it so i can take it on and off and I, it's definitely not going to stay up there i just needed it for really for this one day because I, I do, you know, I don't do a whole lot of bush hog and I don't do a whole lot of tractor work. I just, that's why I have, I mean, it's part of the reason I have a small tractor because I'm not out here, I'm not out here doing something on it every day. Uh, I just need it when I need it. I use it to till up my garden or really and move dirt around, work on my driveway, just the basic stuff around my house. So, um, I am going to bush hog. I do have a power line. Then I'm gonna bush hog and I'm gonna plow it up for the for the uh, deer this year. Hopefully, it'll be a good good deer field this year. All right, so uh, if you're not subscribed, hit that subscribe button. I'm doing literally doing all kinds of stuff, and I'm even making my tra <laughs> my tractor look stupid with a it looks like LSU colored uh, umbrella. So we'll, we'll see how it works. If it's not gonna work out, you'll see it in the video. And the other reason that I haven't put on a I guess really the main reason, well, I guess the two main reasons is so I wanna be able to roll this bar down so I can drive up in this shop because see this header right here, right there? The top of the roll bar is at, I mean, it's right at it. If I had a can't, I mean, and I can't come in here with it because it, when the tires go up on the slab, that's when it hits. And I could, it, it's so close. It's like you could, couldn't even slide a credit card between them. So anyway, so so every time I come up here in the shop, so I just turn the roll bar down. If I had a canopy on it, I just couldn't do that. It would be, it would stick up. It'd just be awkward. So it might look a little crazy, but that's okay. All right, first thing I got to do is, so I'm in here in the shop. And one thing about having a small tractor is, you know, unless you got a giant shop, which I don't, this shop's 20 by 40, and it's big enough for everything I do. So maybe one day I'll get a barn. I think I need a barn and probably another portable building. And that's probably all I need. But I do everything in the shop. I pull my vehicles up in here. 
uh, even when I work on them. But this little tractor, see, if this is a big tractor, I couldn't do that. So, I'm gonna, let's get to changing oil. And just an FYI, don't click off, because if, if you need uh, any mechanical information, changing the oil on this tractor is the same principle as changing the oil on any vehicle. It's the same concept. It's just things are located in different places. All right, let's get to it. I probably should have videoed it, but I last night, uh, this was in the nighttime. Last night I had a, I, I backed this bush hog up here in the shop last night. Jet, and I got up under there and you can, I sharpened those two blades under there. And they weren't super dull for a bush hog, but now they got a good edge on them now. And I did that with the angle grinder. I showed you in my last video that, you know, if you don't can't put it on a bench grinder, an angle, angle grinder is second best. I mean, it's, it, it works because the angle grinder is portable. And I got up under there and I back and forth on the blades and for a bush hog, they sharp. And also, see this head right here? That head? All right, so I changed the oil in that head because, let me show you. See this right here? That's a vent. And this is the plug where you can put oil in it. And, but it's got this vent cap right here and that's where it can get air so it doesn't get, uh, the, the oil will flow freely. And over time, and this humidity that we have, condensation will get up in there and it makes the oil milky and it's just not good for it. And about once a year or once every other year, you need, you do need to change the oil in these bush hogs, especially if you live in the south. If you live up north somewhere out, especially out west, probably get by with it out west because it's it's not it's not very it's not very humid. So change the oil in that. I also greased up the U joints and it's all good to go back and went. Doesn't look the greatest. I do need to paint this bush hog, and I think that might be in the works. Uh, I need to pressure wash it off and somehow sand it or something i'm not sure but but anyway clean it up and repaint it and make it look new just like everything else uh, cars trucks whatever there's usually a hood latch so there we go so that's what it looks like underneath the hood of the tractor so this right here that's the oil fill i mean uh, the, the air filter and I'm gonna pull that out and blow it out with air compressor. It's too new a tractor to probably, pro this is a 2020 model. So, and only got 200 hours on it. As you can see, it's dusty. It does need a bath and it'll get one. And, uh, but it's a little bitty motor. I mean, it's just 21 horsepower, it's diesel. That's, it's a little bitty. All right, so that's the air filter. And this right here, just like on a car, that's your oil fill cap. So I take this cap off and that's where I put the oil in. And right here, that's the oil filter. So it's all easy to get to. And this, see this red thing right here? That's your dipstick. So it's, it's just like your car, except it's just in different places. So out here in the shop, you can see I got all kinds of mess in here. It's it's a little full, to be honest with you. I need to do some a rearranging organization. But anyway, so I keep these, and I bought these at like Dollar General. They were like a dollar, and maybe they might have even been two dollars. It's not much. This box I've had it for like two or three years, and what I use them for is. When I pull the drain plug and all on uh, whatever vehicle I'm, I'm working on, uh, I don't generally do it on just working on vehicles, but changing oil, I'll put a glove on, just one glove, and that way I don't get oil stains all over my hands because this diesel oil now, it, it does stain. It's not like, uh, like your gas burner car. For some reason, I don't, I don't know what the difference is, but every diesel I ever worked on, uh, it, it don't take long. That oil gets, it gets it's something to it about it. it. It will stain you. So, all right, so anyway, that's why, just a tip, 
keep some uh, just a cheap box of surgical gloves around so when you got to do something you get nasty all right see this plug right here that's up under the engine now that now i already broke it loose i already broke it loose uh, so then that's what you pull and see i got my glove on get you a drip tray and undo that screw or that drain plug like this make sure that there's a washer on it so you want to make sure you get that because you don't want to lose it and then you just do just like this just like that see how nasty Diesel, I don't know what it is, man, but they just, that oil gets dirty, dirty, dirty. And you just drain it out. And then you put the drain plug back, make sure the washer's on it. And then you can put some oil in it. All right, I put it back. And then I always want to wipe it off because that way, if it's leaking just a little seep or something other, you'd know it. So you'll make sure it's clean when you put it back. All right, so when you get ready to take the oil filter off, this right here, that is an oil filter wrench. This right here, which see it does that, the, that is an oil filter pliers. So or I think it's a removal tool. I, I, I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but I call them pliers. So I used to use a wrench every time, but now I've kind of gravitated towards the pliers because I can get at them at an at a angle and sometimes it's just easier. And sometimes if it's pretty straightforward and you can get to it real easy, wrench works great. So just so you know the difference, continue on. All right, so I'm gonna take these pliers and we're gonna get a grip on them like so. So then I grab it like that and then I turn it. Sometimes it'll be hard, sometimes it's not. It depends on how, how, how tight you put it on there to begin with. I think that's good. So when you take this off, you always want to have a drip pan up under it. And like I said, this this absolutely is the same information for whatever car you have. All right, so look right here. See this right here? There's a rubber gasket right there. Now, you always want to make sure that that rubber gasket comes off because if you have if you put another oil filter on top of there and that rubber gasket stuck, so then there's two gaskets on there, it'll blow out and it'll lose oil pressure like in, a, in just a nanosecond. It'll blow all the engine oil out of it. So before you put the new oil filter on, you need to grease the gasket. And this right here, see it, that rubber piece, that's the gasket. If you don't do that and you put it on dry, the next time you get ready to take that oil filter off, it will be hard. You may have to even tear the oil filter up to even get it off. Cut it up into pieces, who knows? I've had to do that before. So, on, on something that I have bought that somebody else didn't do, do right. So, I'm gonna show you how to do it. You can do this with old oil, it doesn't matter. But all I do is take, see this is, this is the new oil I'm putting in here. Just take a little bit on your finger, just like so. And you take your gasket and just rub a little oil on top of that gasket. All you wanna do is just grease it up just a little bit. That's it, that's all you're gonna do. So right there, see that threaded portion right there? That's what the oil filter screws onto. And see those holes and ports? That is the oil pump. So now, I'm just gonna take this new oil filter and I'm gonna screw it on. 
Make sure you don't cross thread it because you want it to screw real easy. So then you're gonna get it tight. And then you're gonna get it, you're gonna crank on it with your hand. You don't want to put the wrench back on it. You want to get it as hand tight as you can. Because if you put any wrench or that the pliers on it, you're gonna dent it up, mess up the oil filter, it ain't gonna work right. So as hard as you can with just your hand. So the oil's drained out, the plug is put back, we've changed the oil filter, now it's time to put some oil in it. And to be honest, I can't remember how much oil it holds. So this will be a great learning lesson on how to do that if you don't know how much it holds. So I know it's gonna hold at least probably three quarts, so we're gonna start with that. So there's the oil filter cap, and you always wanna wipe, or wipe around it because when you pull this cap off, you don't want any sediment, dirt, dust, grime, anything to get down in that valve cover. You don't want anything to mess up your engine. All right, so I took the, this is the oil cap right here. And see right there, there's some grime. Now it didn't get inside the motor, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on and wipe it off so when I get ready to put it back, I don't get that grime down in the engine. We'll make sure everything's good and clean. Just like that. So then on the valve cover, which is this part, top right part right there, or wherever it is on your car where the oil filler cap is, see, I wiped it off. And so now it's good and clean. So before you put oil in it, you know, most people use a funnel. I use a funnel most of the time. See, this is my funnel. You wanna make sure that your funnel is clean. So you wanna look down in it, you know, down in there, hold it up to some light, and make sure you don't see dust, grime, particles of anything. And if there is, clean that funnel before you, you don't want any of that stuff down in your engine. Okay, remember I told you I didn't remember how much oil it's going to take? So this is how you know, how to check it. So look right here. I, I've been filling up the oil. See, look, the oil is right up to the full mark or right there close to it. Okay, the oil filter is empty. So I autom automatically know it's going to take about another half a quart. So I'm going to go over full. When it gets over full, about right up in here, which is about a half a quart too much. When I crank that engine, the oil filter fills up, it's gonna be perfect. But you definitely don't wanna put too much oil in it because you don't wanna have to drink it back out, so, which is a pain. Okay, you see what I did? See, there is the mark for full, and I went over full by about a half a quart. So when I crank this engine, more than likely, it's gonna be perfect. But I'll come back and show you when I crank it. See that light right there? That's my old light. So when I crank it, that light will go off and I know I'm good. So I pulled the dipstick, uh, wiped it off, uh, rechecked it, and this is what I got. See this right here? Now look, that's right on the money. I mean, it's right on it. So, so that's perfect. So just remember, when, you're, when, you, when you don't know how much oil it is, you can run it up to the full mark and just, just a little bit more, and that'll be just right on the money. Now the only exception to that is, is if you got something big, like a big tractor or like a, I mean, an 18 wheeler or a bulldozer, something big with a giant oil filter. And some of those big machines, they, they hold a lot of oil in their oil filter. I mean, some of them could even be a gallon. So anyway, so that's the only exception. So you just, you know, relative to what you're, what you're working on, but as a general rule, that's about right. 
So this right here is the oil, uh, air filter. See, I, I pulled it out of there. Now, you want to take a rag and wipe up in there, make sure there's nothing crappy up inside there. And this is just general maintenance stuff. So this air filter, it's probably getting close to needing one, but I'm not going to do it this time. I'll do it next time. But I'm going to take an air chuck, and I'm going to blow the dust off of it. I got my air chuck. Off of it. All right, I blew off the air filter, got it all cleaned up for the year. I think next time I'll go on and uh, get an air filter. Uh, just a one quick tip. Uh, I buy my air filters, oil filters, and all like that in advance. And so COVID taught me that if you have it on the shelf, you ain't got to go looking for it. So I already got it. So that was my last oil filter because I bought uh, two or three at a time for this tractor. That was my last oil filter. So I'm going to go buy probably two more and I'll go on and get two air filters. And that'll last me a long, long time. Uh, I only change the oil in this tractor once a year. And I do grease it a little more often than that. And that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to grease it. So the suspension on this tractor has all seal sealed uh bearings on it and bushings and all like that sealed bushings so i don't have to grease the suspension on this thing right there so the only thing i have to grease on this tractor are the u-joints on the rear and these right here this is for the loader so that's the front end loader right there right there and every point that it moves is a grease fitting so I'm gonna go around and grease every one of those. And it'll be good for six months. <laughs> I, Cause I don't use this tractor. I mean, I literally only put, it's got 230 hours on it. I've had it two and a half years. Um, so I'm only putting about an 115 hours a year or a hundred hours a year, give or take. That's all I'm doing. So that's plenty, plenty good. All right, so see these grease fittings right there? It's a little dark. Let's put some light on it. See up in there? That point right there. All right, so what you got to do, see it's got crap all over it and it's dirty. There's no right there. So the very end of it is a little ball valve. And that's what lets the grease fittings in. It's got a spring behind it and it pushes grease up in there. And when you push on it with the grease, it pushes that ball valve in and allows it to go in. So we're gonna clean that up cause I don't want any dirt to get up in there and hang up that valve or anything like that. So uh, first thing you gotta do is wipe them all off. So I just want to clean it up best I can. So now you can see that ball valve right there. So you can see it good. So that's what I'm cleaning up. And I'm going to do that to every one of these. All the way around. I don't know how many fittings there are, but probably about 10. And you want to clean it around it if you can, if you can get up in there. And see, now it's clean. So when you grease it, so now that it's clean, you wanna make sure the end of this is clean too. And I just used it last night, it's clean. So push it up on there and then pump your grease gun. All right, uh, got them all greased, everything's good to go. And uh, the last thing I'm gonna do before I shut this hood is check the radiator fluid. So see if it's got good antifreeze in it. Now, this has a reservoir on it. And yeah, you can see down, see that down in there. I'll move it around a little bit and it's sitting, I think it's sitting right on the low mark, which is uh, okay because it's cold. And then second of all, this is the radiator cap. 
I'm gonna, you gotta push down on it to turn. Do like that. Make sure there's no corrosion or anything on the cap because this cap has to work right. Otherwise, it won't work. It'll actually make the engine run hot, so that's good. Stick your finger on there. Make sure everything doesn't look milky. It doesn't look dirty or anything like that. This is too new of a tractor to be needing uh, antifreeze, so we're all good to go. And if they think antifreeze, I think probably in Really and truly, once it gets to be about five years old, I'll probably, probably change it all out. But it doesn't need it now. Okay, so now I'm going to back it out, put the roll bar back up, and I'm going to put this umbrella on it. And I'm probably going to make that the thumbnail and probably the title because... I just really think it's gonna look crazy. So I'm probably just gonna zip time on there. We'll see. So, all right, here we go. Let's raise this roll bar. It has these, these pins, they just lock in just like so. Looks like I got a buddy spider in there somewhere. It's probably living inside that roll bar. All right, let's get down, bro. Okay, so I set it there. I'm gonna put that, I just took a picture of it and I'll put that up on the screen. So I think I was gonna put some pipe on there so I could just take it on and off, but you know, to be honest with you, I'm not gonna do this a lot, so. I just needed something for the one day. So I think I'm just gonna set this up there like this and put two or three zip ties on it. And I, I think it'll look good. Let me, let me hang on a minute. Well, I was gonna mount some uh, like PVC pipe to like slide it down into. But since, like I said, like I said, I'm only gonna use this one day and I think I'm just gonna take some zip ties, put some zip ties right here and just zip tie it for the day and then cut them off when I'm through. I, Cause I can't ride down the road like that. I think, uh, yeah, I don't have to modify anything. I think that's gonna work just for the day and that'd be great. All right, I'm just gonna wrap up this video. I really appreciate y'all coming along. Thank you so much for all my new subscribers. Thank you so much for everybody following along with me all this time and uh, my older subscribers. Thank y'all so much. I'll see y'all next time. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. If you're not subscribed, I'm doing all kinds of mess. So hit that subscribe button. Please share it with your friends. Very few of my videos ever get shared. And uh, so if y'all will, share it. Give me the thumbs up. Thank y'all. And I'll see y'all next time. God bless.